Hey guys, today uh, for vlog number three, I will be talking about three movies, Metropolis, The Dark Knight, and WALL-E. So these three movies all share a common setting, which is a dystopian future. But the reasons for this dystopian setting is different in each of the films. So for the first film, um, Metropolis, it's dystopian because there's huge amounts of income inequality and um, you have like one class of people living above earth, like living above ground where they can see like the sky and stuff and they're not confined. And then you have the, the lower class um, living underground. So their conditions are sort of awful and they so, it, it, it's sort of like a, an exacerbated... Um, like out of sight out of mind thing you know like they're such a low class that they don't we don't even need to like look at them so um th this wealth inequality and class inequality is what leads to the dystopian nature of this film now the main character uh john frenderson he wants to sort of discover and uncover just exactly how bad the conditions are underground like to see what the other class lives uh, almost like uh almost like that book from American history, how the other half lives, where it, it um, depicted like the, the horrible conditions in like the industrial cities, for example, like Chicago and New York, where all the apartments were like, they were sort of just packing people in there like sardines. So this is actually a parallel to that sort of historical um, allegory. <clears throat> where he wants to discover how the other half like the other class lives and he sees that the conditions are awful and he decides that he wants to help the people that are living underground and he wants to like sort of free them and bring class uh, equality back so that everybody can live above ground and they won't have to be subjected to the horrible conditions of underground so um Towards the end of the movie, there's sort of, um, there's like a huge riot and anarchy. It's like complete chaos, all hell is breaking loose. Um, and you can tell that society is like on the verge of sort of something, something is about to change, like the class differences is about to change. But um, all of this like fighting and, and chaos leads to uh, like a water system breaking and it causes a huge flood of literally biblical proportions because it's the flood parallels Noah's Ark where Noah had to secure two of each animal uh, on the ship because God told him that there was going to be a flood that was going to destroy the entire earth and it was his job to like preserve the animals so that he could save the populations of them after the flood occurred. So this is what happens at the end of the movie. The flood comes in and it wipes everything out and it's sort of like a reset button, like a fresh start on the on like the class inequality that is experienced within the world of this movie. So that's sort of like the myth and ritual aspect of it where it has um, parallels to also Fred Frederson um, going from above ground to below ground has sort of uh, biblical parallels to Jesus Christ being the son of God um, coming down to like to earth to be the Messiah and like preach kindness and love and to preach his father's teaching like to te to preach God's teachings. And so that's basically Metropolis. Moving on to The Dark Knight. This one is a very different dystopian setting. This one is dystopian because there's lots of rampant crime in um, in Gotham City and Batman feels like he has to take it upon himself to sort of get rid of the crime because his parents were murdered by uh, a criminal when he was a very young child. So that's what pushes him to, to sword, sort of becoming Batman in the first film anyway. So the main antagonist of this of this movie is the Joker, um, the classic Batman villain. You know, we see Batman and Joker, they're like sort of yin and yang to each other. They play off of each other. And um, that's, for, for in terms of myth and ritual, that's the eternal struggle of good versus evil. You know, um, Batman is, he's, he's a vigilante figure and he feels like he is uh, above the law and he feels like he, he, uh, it's his duty to rid the, the streets of Gotham of crime. So he goes above the like above the the police forces and everything, above the government, above like the mayors and stuff. Batman just is basically untouchable. He works on, on, on he like answers to nobody. So um, it's he's in an eternal struggle with crime in Gotham because no matter how many criminals he locks up and no matter how many people he arrests and beats up, there's always more and more criminals that keep popping up. You know, the city is sort of run by them. And the Joker is like a symbol. Like the Joker is like crimes uh, personified. So he's sort of Batman's like main, um, 
like main antagonist and his main um, focus he's always thinking about like how to beat the Joker because he's like the thing that symbolizes what's wrong with Gotham City so there's another character in this movie named Harvey Dent who he actually admits to being Batman falsely because the Joker wants to kill Batman you know they're arch enemies he wants to like uh figure out his secret identity like expose him like tear him down like humiliate him and then kill him so Harvey Dent uh takes the fall for Batman because Harvey Dent realizes that Batman is very important to the city in terms of keeping at least the crime at bay he can't eliminate it by himself but he can keep it at bay especially um when there's criminals like the Joker and stuff so um Harvey Dent admits to being Batman and this leads to the Joker um, finding him and attacking him, you know, kidnapping him. And he, this causes, like, for half of his face to become burnt off. So Harvey Dent imitating Batman actually leads into um, one, of the, one of the myths that was discussed in the video lectures, which would be Atlas imitating Zeus, where he was faking the thunder and the lightning until he was struck by 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 a real bolt of lightning. That is sort of what Harvey Dent goes through in the movie when he's like imitating batman and pretending to be like the dark knight and like the savior of gotham and then he gets struck by a real bolt of lightning when um the joker decides to like kidnap him and attack him and stuff to lure out like to actually lure out batman because he realizes that it's not really like he's not really batman moving on to the third and final movie uh we have wally <clears throat> which is probably the most feel good dystopian film out of all the three of them since it's a pixar movie but uh, in this movie, the reason that the future is sort of dystopian and all destroyed and everything is because of um, over consumption on Earth and overproduction and sort of like this company by and large, they're, they, they're sort of like Walmart on steroids where they like produce everything and they like provide all the services, but then like everybody consumes so much of their products that there's literally um, scenes in Wally where like the piles of trash that Wally builds is like taller than the skyscrapers that the humans built before they left Earth. So things are pretty bad on Earth because of um, overconsumption. Like the environment is destroyed. Uh, the only living animal we see on Earth is like a cockroach, and like that's it, you know. So um, it's it's like sort of a like like a dystopian like blank slate, but it's also sort of like a dystopian Garden of Eden because the other robot character in this movie, uh, Wally's like love interest Eve. Uh, she's literally named Eve. So Wally and Eve are like a parallel to Adam and Eve where they they find the plant on Earth and they go through like a, a whole, like how Adam and Eve were the first two humans, Wally and Eve lead to Earth being repopulated because they find a plant in a boot on Earth and they take it back to the, to the ship where all the humans are waiting for Earth to be like rehabitable. So they wait like hundreds and hundreds of years on this ship and they're all in their floating chairs and they're still like the ship is still produced by by and large and they're still consuming all by and large products on the ship so the problem was never solved like they never learned their lesson about the overconsumption and the overproduction and just like being slaves to technology and like more 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 so the humans they basically are like giant babies on on the ship like like they can't move like they can't stand up by themselves they, they all have to walk by using like a floating chair so um it's also sort of like a like a representation of of current political climates you know and what we're dealing with now in the, in the real world but <clears throat> that's neither here nor there these are the three videos that i did so see you guys next week